before we start, I wanted to do a quick survey of the room. Who has heard of a wire frame before? Okay, great. That's almost everyone. That's perfect. Who uses wire frames in their workflow? Okay, great. That's some more people. Um, if you use wire frames, this might be very familiar to you. Um, but we're going to do a really basic introduction on what these are, how you use them, when to use them, and how they can help you in your workflow. Um, so to get started, a little bit about myself. My name is Carolyn Thayer. Um, I also go by Cara. I am currently a graphic designer at Mainly SEO, which is a full-service marketing agency based in Portland, Maine. Um, the majority of my current work is designing websites for WordPress, but I also have past experience in web app design. Um, originally from the South Shore of Massachusetts, but I went to college in Portland, Maine, and after spending a year in Philadelphia, I moved back to Maine. Um, if you have any questions after, beside, and you don't have time to ask, just feel free to tweet. Okay, so the goals of this presentation and what I'll be talking about today is what wireframes are and the different types of wireframes, when to use each type of wireframe, how wireframes can help you communicate effectively with clients, and the tools used free and paid that you can use to create wireframes. Wireframing is an important first step in creating a website and the foundation of a good user experience. So the definition of a wireframe, the official definition from usability.gov is a wireframe is a two-dimensional illustration of a page's interface that specifically focuses on space allocation and prioritization of content. Functionality is available in intended behaviors. For these reasons, wireframes typically do not include any styling, color, or graphics. Wireframes also help establish relationships between a website's various templates. So in other terms, what is a wireframe? A wireframe is to a website what a blueprint is to building your house. Depending upon, uh, the site upon the basic structure and form of your website gives you a good foundation to start on before you move into design and development. So why should you use a wireframe? When you build your house, you need to decide where your walls are going to be and how many rooms you need before you pick out the paint swatches and the curtains. You would lose a lot of time and money if you completely built out your kitchen, wallpapered the walls, added in your cabinets, and then realized you didn't leave room for a stove. Similarly, when building a website, you could spend hours deciding upon the drop shadow and the hover effect of a button only discover that you didn't ever need that button to begin with, and you just wasted that time building and designing that. It will save you a lot of time and frustration to focus on the content and functionality of a website before you focus on the design elements. Wireframes should also be easy to change. If you are working with a client, this is a great time to get feedback, clarify expectations, and make recommendations for changes. It should be much easier to make a change now in the wireframe stage than once you have applied design choices in a mock-up, or even worse, once it's already been coded. So what should your wireframes focus on? Your wireframe should focus on the hierarchy, which is what is the order of importance of your information, your content, exactly what information is needed on each page, and its form, type, length or size and functionality. Layout. Where on each page will your content go? What path is your user going to take? These are all the things you should be thinking about and the conversations you should be having when getting feedback on your wireframes. What you want to avoid on your wireframes are colors, fonts, and style elements. A wireframe is not the right stage to be thinking about these elements. These elements should come after your wireframe, wireframe and once you have good bones to build your website on. Okay, so before starting your wireframe, the first step you want to do is ask, why am I doing this? Think about why you need or want a wireframe and give some thought to why you're doing it and who you are creating it for. This will decide what type of wireframe you need. So, potential answers. Uh, I need to quickly generate ideas for myself. I am fighting, as a designer, I might be fighting blank page fear. I might have no idea where to start. I am a visual thinker and I need to see some options. Uh, maybe I need to make sure I cor correctly understand what a client is saying. 
Um, you want to be on the same page as your client's vision before you start the project. Um, maybe the client has a specific user path or experience in mind, and you want to make sure you're interpreting that correctly. Or maybe you just want to get sign off from a client on a layout before you go all the way into development. So if you Google wireframes, you'll get a whole range of very different images that pop up, with multiple names. For this talk, um, I'm dividing the types of wireframes you'll see commonly see into two used categories, low fidelity wireframes, which are also referred to as sketches, um, versus high fidelity wireframes. So low fidelity wireframes or sketch are often quick and messy. They can be done on a paper or computer. They're focusing on your navigation and your general layout. You're probably not adding copy at this stage. Um, I personally use these types of wireframes for brainstorming ideas, either for myself before I start a wireframe, or when collaborating with another in-house team member to generate and communicate ideas back and forth. Um, for me, this type of wireframe is the best for fighting blank page fear. Um, when I took a drawing class, I once had a teacher who always had us do several thumbnail sketches in the corner of the composition before we started our drawing. And this always helped me to visualize what I was doing without the fear of ruining the entire drawing, and these sketch wireframes are the same thing. Um, low fidelity wireframes work the same way. Um, often when you create these, I create them on a scrap piece of paper or on a napkin, and they're thrown out without ever being shown to them. Other type of wireframe would be high fidelity wireframe. These are commonly done on a computer, however they can be done easily with pen and paper. They will include more Ipsum, or more preferably the um, client's actual content. I will say it's a lot easier and more effective to design around your content. Um, however, occasionally I get a client who's creating a site brand new business, they have no idea where to start with writing their content, and a visual of what they need um, can be very helpful for some clients. Um, the focus on these type of wireframes is more on content and the hierarchy of your content on the page um, than in a low fidelity wireframe where you're focusing more on a general layout. And these are the, usually the type of wireframes I present to the client for approval before moving on into development. <coughs> Um, these types of wireframes are also great for communicating with your developer. Your developer should be able to get a good idea of what you're looking for based on this wireframe. So this is really important and I find sometimes confused on Google. Mockups and prototypes are not the same thing as wireframes. Um, online you can see the phrase mockup and prototype occasionally used interchangeably or with wireframes. Both of these items are separate in the design phase. A mockup is a design file that should be near exact representation of what your final product will look like. This deliverable should contain all design elements but not be interactive. A prototype focuses on the interactions of your site and navigating through pages. These can either be done by importing your completed wireframes or completed mockups into prototyping software and hot mapping them to be clickable. Both mockups and prototypes can be very useful in your design process. However, your conversations when presenting these items for feedback to your client or other team members should be very different than the conversations you're having with your wireframes. So now I'm just going to go through some side-by-side -side examples uh, before and after of wireframes to mockups. So this one you can see it's a little small. Um, is for a marina and vacation rental property. It's essentially the same as the wireframe, with the exception of in the top right corner on the wireframe is a pay your bill now button. Um, that's removed, but may be added later. Goals for this site redesign were to make the site responsive, professional, simple, and modern. Um, this client had their content, most the majority of it, before wireframing, which is very helpful in why there's so few changes. Um, another example here, this wireframe is for a site redesign for one property of a large hotel group. 
<clears throat> this wireframe had a slight change with moving a weather widget down into the body instead of the header. And they added a drop down menu to other properties, which is owned by the parent hotel group. Um, this conversation was able to be had by the wireframe. When getting feedback from the client, they realized um, they wanted to link to seven other properties instead of one. This wireframe to this mock-up had the most changes. Um, and a lot of these changes were made in separate versions of wireframes, but this was a great example of a client not having content. Um, so this is for a co-working space that's currently under construction. Um, the point of contact for the website had a background in construction and not marketing. He, they had no idea where to start with the content from their website. Um, so we did a sample on wireframe based on other competitors in their industry. And they were then able to talk about how they needed a, an elevator statement, maybe a call to action, um, highlight some benefits or features up from their business. And they could get a good idea of the general length. Um, and then in between these two stages, they actually hired an in-house marketing person who was going to do blogging and social media. Um, we were also able, the wireframe was also able to generate a lot of conversations that were useful, such as um, because they're not open yet and they will be opening soon, how does their website need to change in the next three months? What does the website need now versus what does it need then? Um, what benefits or features are they going to offer? Um, what do you want most visitors of your site to do? And what is your most important call to action? I find a lot of times until clients see the wireframe, they think all call to actions are the most important. So talking to them about this and saying, we're going to put one call to action at the very top, what is your end goal for this process? Helps them really visualize where that's going to go and what it should be. So where should wireframes come in your design process? Um, my personal process is typically a sketch to brainstorm ideas, high fidelity wireframes, a homepage mockup, and a style guide additional mock-ups only if I need them for a unusual page, and then it moves right into development. Um, as much as I strongly suggest using wireframes, they may not be needed for every design process. It's also entirely possible if you know a lot about your content and your layout. For example, if you're using a website template and you're just inputting content and you're not changing the layout a bit, you might be able to skip the wireframe entries. Um, research should always come first before wireframe. That's most important. Some tools for creating wireframes. So you don't need anything fancy to create a wireframe. Um, some tools you might already have are pen and paper, PowerPoint, Photoshop, Illustrator, or Sketch. These work perfectly well at creating wireframes. Um, specialty wireframe tools, which may have a cost associated with them, are Action, um, Balsamic, with the wireframe CC and mockups. Um, all of these tools range in pricing and features. Most of them offer free 30-day trials or a free tier or freemium method with limited usage. Um, I encourage you to try out a few of these tools and find the right one for you. I personally have used Flippy in the past. I currently use mockups. Um, I really like to use a program with limited options. I don't want to have access to colors or design or anything like that because I might pay too much detail and spend way too much time to get a little bit, you know, I start focusing on the radius of corners of buttons and sink a few hours. <laughs> um, I also just like the quickness of stencils and being able to drag and drop them. So that is it for now. Um, if you have any questions, please ask those and happy answers.
scale against using wireframes? I do have a lot of people that don't may not understand them. Um, I have had clients completely sign off on wireframes and then get into the mock-up phase and be like, no, I don't want, you know, this isn't what I wanted. Um, so I try to make that really clear uh, that the wireframe is where your content layout would be, and that's where you're, what you're signing off on. So if you had somebody say that, that's not really what I want. Do you have to look back? It, it depends, yeah, it depends on the project manager and the scope of that project. Um, have you used wireframes in any usability testing as a prior? In my, so currently in my current job I have not, but in a last job it was not with WordPress, but we were building a web app from scratch. And I did use wireframes with more usability testing, mostly in-house, but um, everything was done in wireframes because it was all being built from scratch before I went to a developer. Then moved to prototypes, so there was a lot of back and forth testing, iteration, testing, iteration. You do a high fidelity markups. How many customer additions do you do typically in life? Um, I, we usually go with two to three. However, I find with most, when I started doing the wireframes, I find that it's usually, it's less than one usually. Because um, they know what they're getting on the page, so it's really just styles. Um, but we will, I will um, revise the wireframes two to three times. Yep. Are you familiar with the LiveScribe pen? And if so, how would you use it in building wireframes? I am not familiar with that. What, can you explain what that is? It's a physical to electronic, analog to electronic pen that you draw and it comes becomes available electronic, uh, no, electronically on your phone or a computer, computer screen. That sounds actually really great. I am mm -hmm. not familiar with that. I have heard of um, programs where you can take pictures of whiteboard drawings. So if you're working in a team and you're doing your wireframes on a whiteboard, you can take pictures and hot map those. I haven't heard of them. That's what that's good. process I wireframe every page of the site but I only mock up typically the home page and a style guide that's then applied to the site and the developer I work with is really great at applying those styles to all the wireframe If you're not, 
Are you just replacing the content or changing the layout at all? Or? Okay, yeah, I'd say if you're not changing the layout, you most likely don't need to use the wireframe. Um, the wireframe is really focusing on, because you can probably easily activate the, um, the theme and have show the client their content right in there. Yep. Do you still make wireframes even using the beta theme? I do because we change the theme a lot. Um, it uses different columns, so we use that as a framework, but we'll make lots of edits to that theme. So I do, even though we're using a theme, we're not going if we're uploading a demo content and we're not changing the styles of the theme and we're not changing the layout, we will sometimes skip the wireframe phase. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, well, I'll be in the happiness bar for a while if anyone wants to come talk. Thank you very much.